Oh my goodness. This is the most overrated brand, but like I hate saying that. <sighs> I don't even know how to say this, but Hey guys, welcome back to my channel today. In today's video, we are going to be answering a whole bunch of fun questions about high-end and luxury beauty. We're gonna be talking about brands, the ones that are overrated, underrated, hidden gems in the industry, what are my favorite products, favorite eyeshadow formulations. This is going to be a tag video and I've actually collaborated in this video with my friend Kelly Gooch. Both of us have created these questions for this high-end beauty tag. So we're both going to be answering these in each of our videos and if you don't know who Kelly is, Kelly is also a makeup reviewer. She does drugstore high-end but most importantly she solely focuses on cruelty-free beauty. So if that's something that is up your alley then she is definitely going to be your resource. She is very knowledgeable, so so nice and such a beautiful soul that I feel like she's going to be someone you're really going to love just as much as I do. So I always look forward to watching her videos and when we decided to collaborate together we thought why not do a beauty tag and encourage other creators to answer these questions as well. We do want to thank Jen Phelps who did the drugstore beauty tag because a lot of these questions are inspired by those questions. Now without further ado, let's get on to question number one. Question number one is if you could use only one high-end beauty brand for the rest of your life, what would that be? I feel like you guys know me pretty dang well as to what brand this is going to be, but basically I formulated my answer on which brand is consistently across all sorts of different types of products been really consistent in quality. So most of the things from this brand have worked out for me and that is why I am choosing Charlotte Tilbury. She has great powders, foundations, base products, setting spray, eyeshadow. I'm trying to think. She basically has covered all the bases and I think I could definitely wear her makeup for the rest of my life if that was the only brand I had. She has released some duds as of late. Hint, hint, the cheek tints. <laughs> Yikes. I'm still really excited about this brand and I'm hoping that this year brings really good releases for us and I'm also hoping that the quality stays consistent. Question number two is what is the most underrated beauty brand? Now, I've decided to choose a hair brand for this because this is one that I think needs a lot more love and I feel like every single product I've tried from them, no word of a lie, has been amazing. This is actually Olaplex and Olaplex is a hair brand that I've seen used in salons and they also have take home products to be purchased from their website as well as Sephora. So I've actually been able to try everything from the line except actually, sorry, backtrack. I haven't tried number zero which is their newest product so that is something I can't speak to but my favorites are the number three hair treatment. This has done amazing, amazing things to keep my hair nice and healthy. My hair is color treated. I put it through the ringer. I use heat every other day with my Dyson blow dryer. I straighten it, not too much, but you know, the odd end I do straighten from time to time. So I put a lot of heat on my hair as well as color it. So it needs these types of things to stay relatively healthy. <laughs> I also really, really love the Bond Smoother. This is one that also reduces frizz really nicely. And I like this one because it kind of tames your hair. If you have like static problems with your hair, sometimes I get that. We have a very dry climate sometimes. This has been amazing for that. And the last product is the number seven bonding oil. This is one that I use more frequently than I think anything else because it's just like after your shower and you've towel dried your hair, you can just put this through to the ends. It has a really nice scent and also it does a great job of eliminating frizz, keeping that moisture in and adding a little bit of shine. So those are fantastic products. And I do think that this brand needs a lot more love because I know there's people talking about it, but there should be a lot more people talking about it. Now question number three is what's the most overrated high-end brand? Oh my goodness. What is the most overrated high-end brand? This is such a tough question. This is the most overrated brand, but like I hate saying that because I love it, but it is overrated. Oh man, that's hard to say. The most overrated high-end brand as of right now current is Natasha Denona. And I'm going to say why that is. There's quite a few brands I think that could fit into this answer depending on how you look at the question but for Natasha Denona I feel like there's lots of people that rave about her palettes before they're even launched <laughs> like 
this is going to be my favorite palette. I'm so excited. And Natasha Denona actually does offer a fantastic eyeshadow formula, but she is also one that likes to experiment. Whether or not you like that or not is going to depend on, I guess, how much of a fan you are with her. But sometimes she strikes gold with these formulations and it's ultra creamy, gorgeous finishes, really nice to work with. Other times she strikes coal and it's really dry, really stiff, harder to work with, manufacturing inconsistencies. It's something that we always have to watch for as consumers of her brand. She likes to try new things here and there. So when you are purchasing a palette from her and often very expensive palettes to boot, you never really know sometimes if the formulation is gonna be what you're used to or if it's going to be something that is completely new. So that's why I'm gonna say this is overrated at the moment. I think she needs to so badly improve her own website. This is something that I'm just gonna give you guys a bonus tip here. If you're ordering from Natasha Denona, please don't use her website, especially during a sale. It's going to crash. You're going to have multiple charges on your credit card. I'm not even trying to be negative, Nancy. I'm speaking the truth here. <laughs> Do check out Sephora, Beautylish, other retailers that will offer her products for such a big brand and such a presence. I really hope that she changes her website up so it can handle more traffic. There's big brands out there that do this well, so I don't see how she hasn't been able to do that yet. I will say getting up there is Pat McGrath Labs as well as Charlotte Tilbury. I feel like they're riding the coattails of this question. So who knows, in six months time, perhaps it's going to get bumped and one of these other two brands is going to become the most overrated. What do you think is the most overrated high-end brand? I'm super curious. Question number four is what is your favorite high-end product that is under $50? I'm going to use the Canadian currency for this because I am Canadian. So these two products are both under 50 Canadian dollars. And I think if you want like a touch of luxury, but you don't have so much money to spend, these two are going to blow you away. So the first one is the Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. Both of her formulations are under the $50 Canadian price point. They're both sitting at 39 Canadian dollars. My two favorite shades right now, of course, we're going to talk about Pillow Talk. This is Pillow Talk here. I'm going to swatch it for you because Pillow Talk has very interesting undertones that I feel like sometimes it pulls a little bit brown, a little bit pink on some people also. It just really depends on your lips and your undertones. But this is Pillow Talk here. And on me, it looks beautiful. It's like a very perfect pinky nude. So this is, of course, one of her absolute favorite lipsticks. She pushes this one a lot because it's such a bestseller. So many people love this shade. Maybe a shade that you haven't heard of that I do still really recommend. And if you've tried Pillow Talk and you're like, meh, it's not really for me. Very Victoria is my second favorite right now from the Charlotte Tilbury lipstick line. It's on the right side. So you can see that they do have some similarities for sure. So this is a really, really lovely one too. I think both of these work excellent for so many people. I wanna talk about the second lip product that I think under 50 Canadian dollars. This is also one that you're going to love. This is the Pat McGrath Labs Lust Lip Glosses. I physically have to prevent myself from buying the entire line. This is my favorite shade. This is Sunset Rose. Here we go on the far right hand side here, we have Sunset Rose. So clearly I have a certain flair for a certain lipstick color, right? All of these are compatible together, but I really, really love this gorgeous gloss for that nice shine. It's non-sticky. And this one has a golden shimmer that I'm gonna try to get the camera to pick up because it's really, really beautiful. I'm really, really hoping you guys can see that, but it is ever so fine. Gold shimmer. I think it is absolutely stunning. All right, guys, question number five is what is a hidden gem from the high-end category that nobody talks about? I'm going to talk about two products here, and I do think they have been spoken about for sure, but not nearly as much as they should be. So the first product I'm going to say are the Chanel blushes. I do have two of these, and of course there are some gals that do review these. They're definitely not talked about, I think, how they should be. These are extremely glowy, sheeny, beautiful, natural looking flushes to the skin. They're extremely nice to work with because they blend out really well. This is Jersey. Jersey is my favorite. I got Jersey quite a while ago from the States. And ever since I've been trying to track down this shade for my Canadian gals, because a lot of you guys asked me about that. Where can I get Jersey? For some reason, we don't sell it here. I don't understand because it's gorgeous. There's also a shade here that I don't know if it's still available. I'll have to double check on that, but this is bronze rose. It does have a really nice natural finish to the cheek as well. So here we have both of the shades here. You can see they are distinctly different. Jersey on the left, bronze rose on the right but they're really, really nice. Now I had to build up these swatches about three layers, but when you actually apply them to the cheeks, they're nice and glowy and like 
a natural skin finish. They're just so beautiful. So these, I think, need a whole lot more love. This next product is another hidden gem within the high-end category. Now, this to me is really going to depend on the type of luxury lover that you are. If you enjoy high-end fashion names, so Chanel, Dior, Hermes, all of these brands, they do have their own makeup lines. Hermes is kind of starting to get more and more products as they go, but right now they have lipsticks that I think so many people are going to really enjoy, but very few people talk about. And I have the matte as well as the satin finish. Both of them I'm very impressed with. The matte still has that matte look, but doesn't look crusty or dry on the lips. It's still a very comfortable matte. And then I'm going to show you one satin. This is Beige Kalahari. So Beige Kalahari is on the right side and then the Rose Boys one is on the left, but you can see even that matte has a really nice creaminess to it. I'm hoping it pulls through on swatch because the satin you can see has more of that shine, but both of them have an exceptional pigmentation level as well as creaminess. And you'll be very surprised at how well they perform. So this is definitely a hidden gem. Question number six is what is your favorite high-end foundation? Hands down, I didn't even have to think about it. It is the La Mer Soft Fluid Foundation. This is the sweet little baby right here and she is a treat. She is a treat to invest in, but she is also a treat to wear and enjoy. That's so cheesy. I don't even know why I said that, but she is really, really, really good. Like I would pay the price in full, no problem, no questions asked because of how good it is. It's so creamy on the skin. This is truly a luminous radiant finish, but nothing too crazy intense. It just makes your skin look like you were at a spa all day and you have that hydration back and that moisture, that nice glow. It's just so good. Like this is your skin, but better, I promise. And it's worth every single penny, which is why I love it. Question number seven is what price? products do you tend to buy more at the high-end price point uh everything <laughs> So I am a high-end and luxury makeup reviewer, so I literally buy all categories at the high-end level. It's just where my knowledge is at that I stick to this category. Not that I'm against drugstore at all, I just know nothing about it, so I would be very lost. <laughs> if I could narrow down like a specific category to give you advice on, I think eyeshadows are great. I think there's quite a diversity in finishes and formulations that you can get in the high-end category, but I also think maybe foundation or base as well. Maybe if you do want to invest in the high-end and category and something, although not everything in the high-end category is flawless. So do make sure that if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe because that is literally what I do is I review high-end makeup so that you don't have to waste your money on buying something that's expensive that sucks. <laughs> Good base is also really key and I think in the high-end category there's some really really nice ones to choose from. It will help to have a flawless base so that everything on top of it just looks a lot better. If you have a foundation that doesn't look great, emphasizes lines, makes you all dried out and things like that, it's not going to be a good look for everything else going over top of it. So I know that the high-end category offers some great foundation options as well. All right, let's go to question number eight, which is what high-end brand do you think is overpriced? <sighs> I don't even know how to say this, but Charlotte Tilbury? Oh, okay. I do have receipts. I promise. This is why I think she is. I never thought she was at first, but I think she's, ugh, I'm a little nervous. I'm not going to lie. And here's my receipt. She has luxury eye palettes. One of the first ones that I ever purchased was Pillow Talk. This is the luxury eye quad here. So you can see it's really beautiful. Definitely a color story I'm comfortable with. I love pinks like this. And this was a palette that had 5.2 grams. That is amongst those four shades. She has a new palette out under the the collection Hollywood Eye Filters. This is the Star Aura palette and it is also a beautiful palette. Here's why I think she might start to be overpriced. This quad has 2.8 grams compared to 5.2. This is the exact same price. Why though? That to me is a reason that this brand is leaning that way and I really hope that this is just like a one-off. I'm scared this is going to be the new direction of the brand so I'm really hoping that's not the case. Question number nine is what is your favorite high-end limited edition item? Every single year I look forward to these. These are the Hourglass face palettes. These are limited edition because they're only offered during the holiday. So this is Sculpture. This was this year's palette. These palettes do comprise of best-selling shades from the permanent collection as well as some new additions. So so this is one that has three new shades. One blush is from the permanent collection. This is Mood Exposure. And the two on the top row there, number one and number two right here, 
These are the setting powders that are consistently in these palettes. We have dim light and diffuse light. Both of them are fantastic setting powders, but they're consistently in these palettes. So if I had a choice or a pick, I would hope to see some more diversity amongst these palettes in the future. And I would also hope to see some different setting powders in here just to kind of mix it up. Kind of going along the same vein as the Chanel Glowy Blushes. These also are very nice and sheeny powder products that just have that nice, this is my natural skin and this is what I'm born with kind of look, even though it's really not. <laughs> this is one that also was very different, which I did appreciate. So I'm hoping that this is kind of like more of what we can see in the future. Just some different depths in finishes, different shades, different shade ranges. This is something that I always look forward to year over year is what is Hourglass going to come out with? Because they're limited edition always and they never compromise on quality, which I like. All right, guys, question number 10 is what is the best high end eyeshadow formula? This is a hard question. I really do think there are quite a few gems in the high-end category that I think are great eyeshadow formulations. So we're going to talk about the top two. And this was really hard for me to say, you guys. Very, very hard. But my first one is going to come to no surprise to you. This is the best formula, I think, or group of formulations that this brand offers. This is the Pat McGrath Labs Mothership Palettes in the 10 pan packages like this. So this to me is the best of the best of her brand. This is what she can do at the top echelon. This is one of my favorites right now. This is Mothership Sublime love the mattes in here because they're so creamy. I love the shimmers in here because there's such a variety. She is known for her Blitz Astral shades, which are truly unique formulations when it comes to shimmer top coat. In my opinion, they're bar none some of the best in the industry. This color story is also one that I do recommend for someone that, you know, maybe wants to invest in their first palette. Sublime is a great one. That being said, you do have to make sure that you're okay with having a couple repeat shades because this palette is anchored with, you know, your traditional dark browns, black, matte pinks, things like that, which I know are in a lot of palettes. But this is a great one if you want to try out her brand. Now I'm going to say coming in very, very close in second place. And this is only when she's on her game. <laughs> because we've talked about this earlier on in the video. I'm gonna say Natasha Denona is number two. Now, just so you guys know, I review every single one of these palettes that she comes out with. I do that because they're so expensive and I know how she can get a little bit interesting with formula. That is going to be like my honest opinion always. Sometimes I get hate from the huge Natasha stands because I always say the truth. I do it because I don't want you guys to waste your money, honestly. This is a lovely one. This is her midi palette in Glam. This is currently sold out at some retailers. Other retailers have it still but this is a really lovely formulation this is where she was on her game this palette is fantastic the bronze palette is fantastic she has a couple minis that I think are great too I talked about these on my channel already but mini retro is one of them this is a lovely one mini zendo is another great one she does offer quite a nice formulation the mattes are always really nice and creamy and they anchor your looks so beautifully they just work really well and the shimmers and the multi effects that she's done in the past are really cool. So definitely a brand that I think has one of the best eyeshadow formulas on the market. Question 11 is what is the worst high end formula on the market? Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Nervous laughter. My worst ever that I've come across as of late, this is the worst for sure. Um, no doubt about it. And I struggled through the review of these, but here they are. We have the Dior Trio Bleak eyeshadow palettes. Dry, stiff, hard to work with. Pigmentation payoff is really poor. Dior can do so much better, honestly. So I really love their five cooler palettes. My favorite is Nude Dress. These did not seem to deliver. I have no idea why because they're gorgeous and I know that Dior can do a good formula. Oh, these, this was such a waste of money, honestly. I just, it sucks so much how one brand can have such a different variety of formula. This will cater to some particular makeup lover, but unfortunately that wasn't me and this is one of the worst in my opinion. What high-end brand did you used to love but aren't crazy about anymore no words for this one <laughs> just a picture Too Faced is one that has really really slipped my radar no idea why you guys and I've talked about this a couple of times too when we talk about Too Faced holiday palettes they've come out with quite a few this year that have really just went like whew, like right over my head I just don't really care something has changed with them that hasn't interested me or 
other brands are doing a better job of catching my interest. It's one of the two. But I have since decluttered all of my Too Faced palettes. The only one I have is this one, which is Pumpkin Spice, which I do think is really, really lovely. It's really nice and versatile, and I was actually surprised to see the color story because I was like, is this Pumpkin Spice? Like, there's pinks and purples in here. It doesn't really make sense for the name, <laughs> but I didn't mind because the versatility was there. So this is a great one. It is a scented palette that is something that they're known for is to have these really fun manufactured scents. Even some other things they've put out recently. I know they've put out lip products that I haven't been interested in. It's just something that I really wonder how that happened. Is it just me changing as a person and moving on to different brands? Or is it that other brands are catching my interest better? Hard to say there. What is a high-end product that you didn't expect to like? but totally wowed you. Definitely these guys. And this is because this is a brand that's also not super on my radar either. I know that they make great products, but these are the products I wasn't sure if I was gonna like, but these are the crushed oil infused lip glosses from Bobbi Brown. Now she did offer a really cute mini trio of these and I was able to try three different shades. The first one is Free Spirit. This is the brownie beige one. We have New Romantic in the middle and then we have Love Letter on the end. They're really, really beautiful. And these are all shades that are offered in their permanent line as well. They have that really nice, like hydrated look to the lips. So here we have them from left to right, Free Spirit, New Romantic, and Love Letter. They're super gorgeous and they're very buildable as well. They do have really nice shine. They almost have similar shine to the Pat McGrath Lust glosses that I recommended earlier. And these also just layer beautifully as well. So I love the mini size of these. I can fit them in my purse, no problem. And I wasn't sure if I was going to like them, but I definitely do. These are great. Question number 14. What is your favorite high-end eyeshadow palette? So I did a video very recently right here where I counted down all of the palettes that I tried in 2020. So this is definitely the palette in first place right now. It's still my absolute favorite. If you guys watched that video already, you will know which one it is, but this is Charlotte Tilbury Fire Rose. This one is super gorgeous. And I will say the formulation of this one comes in at a close number three when I talked about some of the best eyeshadow formulas on the market. This one has a truly unique shimmer shade right here. So it really has a cool peachiness to it. It's super, super pretty. This is the pop shade in Fire Rose. The matte in here really anchors the palette as well. It's a really gorgeous burgundy cranberry. So this is a lovely palette and I do think the formulation is there. I really hope she brings it back because it's definitely stunning on the eyes. I can't wait to see what Kelly has answered for these questions. Do go ahead and give her some love and don't forget to subscribe to her as well. Thank you once again to Jen Phelps for creating the original drugstore tag and do tag a creator in the comment section if you want another creator that you love to do this tag. Until my next one guys, take care and stay safe. Bye guys.